Hello? Our next presenter is Maciek Jerkpa. Sorry for the pronunciation. He's CEO as at STX Next, and he will present from Python developer to company owner, a bumpy road to success. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me in the back? Everybody can hear me? Is it better now? Yeah. OK, that's good. Thank you. So uh, uh, good morning, one more uh, 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 again. Uh, I'm Maciej Jerkwa, and I would like to uh, share with you my story, uh, my story of becoming uh, CEO of uh, STX Next uh, uh, software house. Uh, the story that from the developer to uh, company owner. Uh, this is the story of 11 years of uh, transformation from, from the developer, student, later developer, uh, manager, and today CEO of quite a big company. Uh, I reached the point where the company has almost 250 people. Uh, and in fact, it, uh, it has a market leader position in the Python uh, software houses uh, in Europe. Uh, first one, uh, find your uh, special something. It all started really during my studies uh, at the University of uh, Technology. It was something like 13 years ago. Uh, that time, you have to be aware that uh, I was starting uh, coding with Pascal and Java, uh, and Python was just emerging, especially in Poland. Uh, during one of holidays, uh, I was a member of uh, Java user group, local Java community, and I volunteered to implement a discussion board in Java. It took me two months of, uh, uh, of very hard coding with Java, of code learning different uh, libraries, working with Apache, Jakarta frameworks, etc. And uh, just before the end of holidays, my project was almost finished. Very simple discussion board was working. And then I found a f I met a friend who introduced me to Python. In fact, he introduced me to CMF. Uh, and he told me to give it a try. I just took a, a quick glimpse. I said, well, why not? Uh, I'm still the student. Uh, I have a lot of free time during holidays. So I spent a weekend trying to implement the similar discussion uh, board with uh, Java. I think it was Jakarta framework that time. And what I discovered, after two days of work, I had exactly the same functionality, or even more, using Python and uh, CMF plan. Uh, uh, very simil similar functionality to the project I finished in Java. And this is how my love to Python began, and this is how I abandoned Java, Pascal, .NET was, I think, just emerging that, uh, that time. Uh, I never give a big try to, to PHP, so I just skipped this phase, I think, uh, uh, here. Uh, so this is where I really found, uh, found something uh, that I want to devote my uh, uh, professional uh, career. And when it, le uh, when it lets me, uh, so just after holidays, uh, I was looking for the job. Uh, and of course, I wanted to be a Python developer. And you have to understand, guys, that the times have been much more different. It was 11 years ago. Poland was not uh, in European Union at that time. Uh, and Python, well, there was no Python jobs at all in Poland. Can you imagine the time when there is no Python job openings uh, on the local market? Uh, because this is how the times have uh, has been that time. I know it's for some of you it's impossible to imagine it, but it was like that. Uh, so I, you know, has started to looking for job uh, and I find uh, a Python opening in the Netherlands. What I did, I just made the call, uh, then sent a couple of, exchanged a couple of emails, and after a couple of, uh, I think, a week or two, I had a first real job as a Python developer, uh, but I had to move uh, to the Netherlands. Uh, and, of course, uh, and of course, I did. Uh, I met the, uh, the guy who was, uh, before I only talked to uh, on the phone, uh, the guy, uh, his name was Peter. He really, uh, I had the real uh, uh, luck because uh, he became my friend. He really take, took care of me in the foraging country uh, for me. Uh, so uh, uh, I spent a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, months 
as a Python developer in the Netherlands, but then I start to feel lonely. Uh, I didn't know anybody, I didn't speak Dutch, so I still don't. Uh, so uh, I wanted to come, uh, go back, you know. Uh, it is the time when you are 25, 26 that you think about starting family, etc. Uh, so it was difficult to socialize in the, uh, for me in the Netherlands. Uh, so what to do, because I still wanted to do Python and Python still was not emerging in Poland. So. Uh, I start, start to talk to him and ask him, well, maybe we can open an office in, in Poland and we start, there is a lot of smart people uh, in Poland really, uh, uh, sorry, some technical, uh, uh, a lot of uh, smart people who can uh, uh, look for developers. Uh, and he agreed, after a couple of beers uh, uh, in the pub, we came to the uh, agreement how, how we structure an office. And then uh, uh, I came back, uh, uh, half a year that I came back to Poland and opened uh, uh, STX Next, uh, today's name. It was in 2015. So, and it was Python. It was a Python storehouse. We started to do, start to hire Python developers in Poland. Of course, no Python developers in Poland, so we had to hire any developers and make them Python developers uh, uh, there. And I have a question, guys, for you. Uh, can you guess? How many years, not months, not days, how many years it took me uh, to grow company up to eight people? Who can guess? How many years? Five years. Five years. Five, 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 two years. Any other guesses? <laughs> <laughs> So we have some, some, uh, 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 some small gifts, company gifts here. Guys, it took me around four years uh, to grow up to eight people. Just to tell you what is happening today, uh, I just took a quick uh, look at the data and uh, today we hire on average eight people a month. And then the beginning was uh, uh, hiring eight, uh, we grew up to eight people after four years of running company uh, and all of this stuff. This is how, uh, how it's changed. We still focus on Python. Of course, we, are, we don't uh, hire eight uh, Python developers a month, but eight people uh, 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 because company is much bigger uh, today. But this is how it, how it was. Uh, I was really focused on Python. Uh, I, I wanted to do Python. I built the first, I would say, first Python company in Poland. Uh, uh, we start to educate market. It was difficult to find people uh, at that time. Uh, but defining the, uh, uh, the niche, uh, because for me, Python in Poland was really a niche, allowed me to be uh, a leader in many areas, of course, in the niche. So for example, a couple of examples. Uh, a company I created was the first Polish company uh, sponsored Python uh, in US, and I think it's still the only one. The same for EuroPython. Uh, we are already, I think, uh, 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 second time we sponsor EuroPython uh, in Europe, and I still think we are the only Polish company that ever was, uh, uh, was, uh, was the uh, sponsor. What I can say, we are the, uh, that we are the biggest Python software house uh, in Europe. I don't know any other Python company in Europe that has more than 100 Python developers, and we do. Uh, I was the first one to, who organized World Plon Day in Poland many, many years uh, ago. Uh, so defining the niche, defining the speciality allows you really to, to, to become leader in your niche and become expert and uh, be grow quite big, uh, 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 quite big. So uh, my advice to you is, uh, guys, do what you really love, uh, uh, but define this, define this something, special something for you, uh, and try to grow in your niche. It's much more easier, and you can uh, uh, achieve the success much, much, much more sooner than, uh, than you can imagine. Because I always f uh, wanted to, you know, big, uh, the biggest Python software house in the world. Uh, uh, you don't need to have thousands of people to be the biggest Python software house in the world because, in fact, there is not many Python software houses in the world. So you just need uh, 200 people and uh, you can say you are the biggest uh, one. And this is, this is very nice. Guys, uh, another quick quiz. Somebody told to me one day, many, many years ago, don't, don't, don't go to Netherlands, stay, find, find a job in Poland. Who do you think said it? 
Yes, it was my mother. So when I announced my mother just uh, graduating the studies, I remember we have been not in European Union, uh, po Poland. Polish people was not allowed to travel uh, without, uh, 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 I think, the, without visa to, 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 to the Netherlands, but we were not in the Schengen, so you had to have the passport, all of this uh, stuff. So when I informed my mother, mom, I'm going, uh, I'm leaving uh, uh, to the Netherlands, she was really shocked uh, and was trying to do everything to stop me. Fortunately, I didn't listen to her. I really believed that uh, I want to do Python and I can achieve a lot going uh, abroad. Uh, and uh, I, decided, uh, I decided to go. It was, I think, one of the key decisions in, uh, in my life. I always you know, dreamed about to go worldwide, to do much bigger stuff than on the uh, local market. Uh, so, uh, and of course, uh, I, I wanted it to be, uh, to be a Python. Another big decision uh, that, that brought me to the place where I'm in uh, today was after a couple, a couple of years later. So uh, a, couple of, a couple of months later, I was, when I was discussing that opening the STX next in Poland, in the same time, I was offered a, a, a quite a good job in London, in UK, that doubled my salary. And then I had to choose, so uh, try to imagine that somebody is offering you double salary to what you have, uh, you just need to move to London, uh, or opening office. <laughs> but I, you know, uh, I, I didn't know that at that time, you know, <laughs> I never been to London. Polish people were not allowed to go to London without the visa at that time. So, I, you know, we have huge Polish immigration right now to uh, immigration to, to London. But it was 11 years ago. It was different, different, much more different. I could, each month in London, I could earn more than my parents uh, uh, earn in two or three years. So, so this, is, this, is, this was the, uh, the difference is one uh, uh, that day. Uh, but I really had a feeling that I can do much more opening a company uh, very soon I, of course, become the, uh, the management board in the company. So I chose uh, to go back to Poland. And one of the, to tell you the truth, one of also of the key decisions was that I really was thinking about starting family. So uh, uh, I thought that it would be easier to find a wife in Poland. Uh, and uh, I succeeded at the end. So, uh, <laughs> so, so uh, so, uh, so this, is, this was, from my point of view, really big decision. I had to decide what to do, this uh, uh, or not. And one more big thing happened a couple of years later. So I wanted to group a company, uh, but the Dutch people suddenly say, well, we would like to take money back uh, 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 from the company. I wanted to reinvest in growth. Uh, what I did, I, I found a new parent company in Poland and uh, uh, persuaded the Dutch people just to sell, sell their shares uh, to the uh, parent company. It was also a difficult decision or risky decision to me because the parent company from Poland was almost 100 people. Uh, so uh, I was not aware what can happen. What happened, guys, in fact, uh, uh, that they took us over, and uh, what happened is that they gave us a lot of work. So in the next couple of years, we were able to, were able to do projects for the banks, uh, and we were quite small, eight people at that time, uh, and gained a lot of experience in fintech, in banking, in, uh, in processes, etc. Where it led, uh, led us, today, we are more than twice as big as our parent company. So we don't do much work for them. We really went uh, 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 worldwide. And we do uh, 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 mostly Python, a little bit of mobile. We were able really to overgrow our company, company that was doing projects for the banks in Poland, Poland very big uh, projects for the banks. And we are just Python developers. Uh, uh, but we, are, uh, we were able to really uh, grow a lot uh, here. Guys, first crisis. This is very important lesson, uh, a lesson to learn. So it was uh, after, uh, just after I started my uh, uh, company, I received a call from the angry client. I think it was during the night. He called me. The system doesn't work. It was supposed to work different. Something about it. 
I, of course, investigated. I talked to my developers. What they say, uh, said to me, uh, this is something that uh, they always said. It's not their fault. It is the bug that was already in the system. It, we just discovered it right now. Uh, or, of course, uh, cl our clients uh, communicate to us something different. So it's not their fault. Let client pay for it. Let him uh, uh, wait. He should communicate much more better. What I did, my uh, reply to, to this one is always uh, different. I always ask myself, Think like the client. Put yourself in the client uh, situation. Uh, so the first thing you, uh, uh, I uh, always do is first to fix the problem, uh, uh, then uh, uh, really to do an extra mile. So stay long night during the weekend, whatever, just to really uh, uh, fix the problem. And then uh, we always, uh, I always later try to retrospect and fix the problem. Usually what, what I do, I cover the cost of this first crisis uh, by myself. Uh, so not even if it's uh, client fault. I always try to not uh, to make uh, clients uh, even more angry. So I said, yes, it's our fault. We should think better. Uh, we invest, uh, invested it. And what, when, uh, what it uh, taught, uh, taught, uh, taught me, so whenever it is uh, how you behave in the crisis, uh, that, uh, 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 this is how you build trust with the, uh, with the client. So if you really, really do an extra mile during the crisis situation, you can be sure that it will pay back to you. you can, this is how we build a long-term long relationship uh, with people, with uh, uh, clients, with companies, by showing how we behave during the crisis uh, situation. So advice, if you ever build company or you have an angry client on uh, the other uh, side of the line, do your best. To, to really fix the problem, uh, to not to try to blame the client uh, for it, even for his, uh, uh, it's his fault, uh, try to really help, and you can be sure that whenever there is another crisis, your client will uh, uh, be more open to listen to you or, uh, and to build the, the long-term relation. Scaling. There will be the time that, uh, that you will have to decide about if you want or how you want to, uh, to scale. I think it was around in the seventh year of uh, running the company. Uh, uh, it was really a breaking uh, point for, uh, for me. So uh, company I, uh, I built grew from around 30 people to 70 people. So more than 100 uh, percent growth uh, in, uh, in the year. What happened in me? How I felt that time? What have changed in me? You have to be aware of, of this kind of things. So it was a year uh, when uh, from developer I became manager. It was the last year I commit the code to the repository. It was not, I think, even that time. It was SVN, CVS, uh, etc. But later developers found out that it was, it was the last part of the code I ever committed. I have it even printed uh, on my wall. Uh, so so this, is, this was the year it happened. The next, uh, the next thing was uh, that my mindset has to change. Uh, I changed from the uh, mode of doing to the mode of developing. Uh, uh, and this allowed me to really scale up, uh, scale up the, uh, the company. So it was the year where when I hired my first assistant because for the first seven, on, on year, uh, uh, seven years, I thought, I don't need an assistant. I can do everything myself. Of course, I can. Uh, but usually, assistant can do it better and faster and more efficient. I had my first recruiter before I rec had been recruiting uh, uh, people myself. I hired the, face, uh, the first uh, salesperson. So I learned that year uh, 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 how to delegate to other people. Uh, the other thing that happened to me, so from the colleague, I became the boss. In the past, I was one of them, one of the team members, one of the developers, one of the person that is uh, 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 committing the code. Later, I, was, uh, uh, I became one of the boss's managers. So he is not our guy anymore. He is demanding, he is delegating to us, he is asking to do some work. He is not doing the work with us. This is the mental change that ha happens to me, and this is what I observe. So, well, they don't invite me to have beer together, don't invite to have quick discussion uh, in the team. So uh, this, is, this is something that really changed, and uh, I had to go through this process that, that was, in fact, not that, uh, not that easy for me. Uh, 
And of course, I start to uh, think in the process way. So managing uh, dozens of people requires you to think, uh, to implement different processes to be able to, uh, to manage, uh, manage it. My advice, guys, to you is uh, that you will have to do this uh, mindset uh, change uh, if, you, uh, if you want to really scale, uh, uh, scale up. Managing working hours. Uh, I remember the uh, most important and most expensive lesson I ever learned. So uh, at the beginning of the company, we have been, uh, our developers have been reporting time somewhere in Excel, in uh, uh, spreadsheets, etc. I discovered after three months that one of developers didn't report the time because he just uh, said he forgot. Uh, it cost us three months of uh, client not paying for uh, this work. Uh, it was really, really difficult for me for the very small company at that time. It was a, a huge amount of money for us. But this is the time that where, I, where I implemented the time tracking system and I, became, uh, I uh, made the core system of, our, uh, of, of managing uh, people. And I think it was uh, the very good very, uh, uh, lesson for me because this system is working uh, up today, and today I'm having really flat structure. I'm able to control, to manage uh, 40,000 hours a month, entire company. This is the amount of, of we report uh, on monthly basis, uh, without really uh, controlling people directly sitting on uh, their shoulders and checking what they do. They just report time. It allows us to be very flexible about uh, about uh, managing time, at, uh, et cetera. It also allowed us to make invoices to, to the clients very fast. So in the past, uh, it took me 10 days, really 10 days of each month to prepare reports and invoice clients. Today, my accountancy is doing it in maximum two days. Uh, and invoicing is very, very important for the company, uh, like a service uh, company. Be big and stay big. So running Almost 250 companies are a big challenge, a big challenge to, uh, to build long-term relations with the client. What I learned, what I believe uh, that motivates people, developers, to, to stay in the company, to, uh, uh, to be uh, uh, motivated. First of all, this is what, what, I, what I think is the most important, this is a project. Uh, so if you have interesting projects, then people will be motivated. You don't need all this agile stuff, etc. Uh, uh, and this is what we try to uh, try to have find good projects, nice projects for uh, for uh, our developers, uh, uh, and this is how to motivate. The other the other uh, 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 thing I uh, uh, think motivate people is people they work with. So except for the project. Uh, for developers, uh, not only, uh, it is important with whom they are to, uh, going to work. So I say good people uh, attract good, uh, 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 good people to your company. Uh, at the end, I, I would point something like work organization and uh, also the brand of the company attracts uh, people. But these two, uh, uh, two most important things, this uh, project, new technology, challenging project, challenging technology, uh, client, how you communicate uh, with, with him, and then people you, are, uh, you spend eight hours every day uh, in the room. The biggest challenge yet to, uh, yet to come. So uh, before I, I, I uh, uh, talk to this, uh, let me show you some uh, two stories uh, 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 about what I think about uh, guessing what will happen in future. It was the time where, when on the market uh, there was only Internet Explorer number six. Not sure if you are familiar with this one, but it was a big version that time. Uh, Firefox was about to born quite soon. Uh, nobody thought about Chrome uh, uh, browser. That time, JavaScript was already on the market showing up, and I said that time, well, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript is not the future. It's going to die pretty soon. And you can see how mistaken I was. But this is what I thought. Well, Python is going to be the number one language at JavaScript. Well, who is, who is going to use JavaScript? Nobody. It's Microsoft. It was connected to, somehow to Microsoft that time. Uh, uh, this is not the language for developers. Uh, uh, the other, the other uh, thing was, uh, uh, my, uh, 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 was about Django. So I was, and I'm still, uh, am very big f fan on Plon CMF. And that time, uh, Django was about to born when I started with Python. Uh, 
and Django was born. And I thought, well, Django is really simple uh, framework without advanced thing and it doesn't require a lot of skills. Python and some other pyramid frameworks are going to become the future. Uh, I, I discovered quite soon that I was very, very mistaken and today, 90% of work we do, uh, my developers doing the company was, uh, uh, is Django, uh, is Django framework. So, you know, what I will say, what I think about future, just, uh, it can change. It is the huge change, it will, uh, huge chance it will not happen. So maybe do other way around. Uh, so what I can see on the market, because we do a lot of projects, Python is getting more enterprise. So I can see more and more uh, big companies are using Python. That is why also uh, you have a chance uh, uh, to, to, to grow easier. Uh, but what I noticed, uh, so I think we are quite uh, secured with Python for the next couple of years. Uh, so I'm not afraid that, that Python will be gone or something. It's stabilized, it's very major. Uh, but what I can see, world is changing very, very fast, and I see a huge potential, huge change in, in JavaScript. And what I would advise to, uh, to you, focus on JavaScript and focus on versatility. So I advise my developers uh, uh, not to, you know, change to JavaScript, but just to learn JavaScript and do both Python and JavaScript depending on what they think is, uh, is, uh, uh, is important, what is uh, good for the project they are working with. And I must say that we have plenty of, uh, I think more than 50, 70% of our develop Python developers already are using JavaScript with different frameworks, uh, still using Python in the backend. So I also see the uh, uh, potential of uh, uh, new languages like Haskell, like Go, you have to be open uh, to it, uh, but you don't need to switch to it just like this. Just learn it and use it in your daily, uh, daily work. Uh, I'm not able to say, you know, what will happen. I'm, what I can advise you about the future, and this is what I have been doing all the time, is just to justify, uh, customize to what is happening. Somebody told me uh, uh, a couple years ago, what do you do if Python will, you know, go, uh, uh, will disappear from the market? My reply was uh, that it will not happen uh, in one year uh, and I will be able to switch to some new language, uh, to some new technology. So I'm very open to what is going on, uh, uh, observing and just changing myself the same way I uh, changed from the CMF plan uh, to Django, and we are now only using uh, 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 only, only Django, mainly Django. Uh, uh, here, just have open eyes and don't be, uh, be open to the change and to reply uh, quickly to, uh, uh, to this one. Uh, this is it. This is what I wanted to share, uh, share with you. I think we have still five minutes to, uh, to your questions, so I'm very, very willingly to open to, 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 to answer your questions. Thank you very much. We have some questions there. <laughs> um, hi, and thank you for your talk. Uh, I had a few questions. Uh, did you have a PyPy project? Uh, PyPy project, uh, Python project with um, PyPy interpreter. PyPy. No, we don't no. have uh, uh, a PyPy, and we don't have uh, uh, the. Uh, yeah, we don't have PyPy. <laughs> all right, all it's right. not that commercial. No problem. Uh, 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 and we don't have OpenStack. So this, okay. this, uh, uh, this, we don't. We have all the others. Um, do you have remote employees and uh, remote? Do you, yeah. Uh, no, uh, maybe uh, maybe one, but uh, working very close. I really believed from the beginning in that uh, in that uh, team spirit. So I uh, structured the office that all uh, one team is sitting in one room, no open space. I believe in the uh, close communication. That I believe one, one one plus one in case of people is more than two. Uh, so all our uh, people are in office. We don't work remotely. We have only clients that work remotely, and it really pays off. It really is okay. efficient. Okay, and final question. Uh, you said that you believe that in JavaScript has a use potential. Uh, do you, are you transitioning to a model where you have uh, Python as backend with a uh, REST API and uh, frontend with JavaScript, any framework, uh, React.js? 
The, this is the architecture decision and depends really on the project. Uh, oh, we do okay. startups, we do enterprise. Uh, so it's up to the team very often or up to senior uh, developer or architect to decide how it should be. Sometimes there is only JavaScript. We have also JavaScript developers and so we have both JavaScript and uh, uh, in front and in backend. Uh, most of the cases we have Python in backend, uh, uh, JavaScript in front end, and of course going into microserv microservices uh, approach. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your explanation, for an uh, inspirational speech, uh, by the way. And uh, my question is, why you become a sponsor of EuroPythons and local meetups technical? So, uh, for many years I was uh, uh, participant in many, uh, uh, many uh, uh, conferences, so I think because we are a very big company, it's time to pay back a little bit. And of course the other, uh, uh, the other uh, topic is really employer branding. It's very important uh, for our developers, and we have more than 100 Python developers uh, uh, in Poland, for us to build the, the brand so they are proud uh, that they can work in the company that is recognized in the community. So one thing I learned a lot during the Python conferences, many different Python conferences, uh, so it's a little bit, I would say, uh, time to pay back. Uh, and the other thing is, is, is building the, the, the brand uh, here, brand awareness. Hi, uh, thank you for your talk. How do you build your teams? So the people and the structure of it? So uh, it's up, usually it's up to the client. Client is, uh, is asking for the size of the team and uh, 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 we try to investigate what is the project and what kind of competences uh, uh, are required and build the team. What I believe uh, usually we should have in the team around four uh, uh, Python developers, one JavaScript front-end developer, at least one uh, manual tester, and maybe, uh, depending on the project, uh, one automated uh, tester. Uh, of course, uh, we go in the direction to have uh, a Scrum Master and very, very important, first of all, product owner or proxy product owner on our side. This is the perfect team uh, composition uh, that works for us. And, you know, uh, uh, people, we try to find people that uh, fit with competences, so to have at least one senior, to have some regular guys, maybe junior, because it's not good to be team only from the uh, senior developers, because it can end up with a lot of quarrels, internal tension in the team. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, thanks for sharing your story. Uh, can you can you say something about marketing and sales? How you find customers, especially in the beginning? So, especially for this first six seven years uh, of running company, I was uh, doing sales myself. So remember, I was really Python developer, so I was doing a little bit of uh, sending emails, but then uh, have, we have been growing on the uh, references. So we have, been, uh, we have been growing on existing clients, clients scale up, be adding another teams, and you have to remember also we had a, a parent company, so it allows us to really grow up to 50 people on the parent company because they have a project for the banks. Later, I was just trying to connect also on the events, networking events like uh, EuroPython, but also other events, uh, watching what's going on, trying to uh, build the network with other CEOs or management in, in big companies. Today, we have the sales team that is doing a lot of uh, this stuff for me, but I'm still involved in all the, let's say, uh, closings uh, deals, so I also talk to clients, sometimes do uh, do project. We invite potential clients to visit our office where we really can impress people because you can imagine when you invite clients to, uh, to your office and you have 100 people in our headquarter with uh, something like 80 Python developers, uh, then they are really amazed about how we are good we are structured, how the process uh, works. So I believe this is the best way how to win uh, our clients, just to invite them. If, if we invite client, if he agrees to visit our office, usually he becomes our client. We have 90% chance that it will happen, and it's happening like this. And we have, uh, on average, uh, right now, uh, uh, one visit every month or every two weeks. Wait, Any I more think questions? We have time for one more question. Okay.
Okay, I have a new question. Um, when you talk about uh, when you have client problem uh, during uh, um, during a project, uh, even if it's client uh, fault, uh, what happens when it's uh, one of your employee who is at fault, who made mistake, uh, anything? How do you deal with that? Mm -hmm. My approach is always the same. Uh, I admit it's our pro our our fault. Really, I always say, sorry, it's our fault, we made the mistake, let us fix it. Uh, and this, what, I, what I learned on it, the feedback from the client is very good because it builds trust. I really see today that crisis uh, situations are, are the best opportunity to win your client for the long-term partnership. One of, I didn't uh, uh, mention it, one of uh, the key success of, uh, 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 of my uh, career is that I build long-term uh, relations with the client. Our project lasts for three, four, five years. That's why we don't need to do a lot of sales. When we start to work with the client, we work with, with this client for many years, just ha having only maybe one team, sometimes growing up to five, six teams. And I believe it's because we are open and transparent to the, to the client. For example, he has access to our time tracking system that allows to build trust. He can see what developers are doing. He has a feeling of the control of the, uh, of the sprints we are uh, delivering. So when is the bug? I say, sorry, we also make mistakes. Yeah, and my question was more about the employees. Do you have you management? Uh, do you practice management techniques to uh, measure the performance of your employees? Or I mean, no, we don't have any, any structure here. We, uh, I believe that team is fixing it uh, uh, itself. So we have an agile, we have Scrum Master that they do a retrospective after each of the sprint, and this is how we try to improve and solve uh, problems and improve for future. Okay, of course, you. we have some management, small management board uh, uh, level uh, uh, just to service delivery managers, keeping an eye and uh, giving feedback uh, half a year or year feedback to, to developers. Okay, thank you again. Thank you. One quick. <laughs> uh, could you please recommend some books which helps to start off with something for beginners in a business? Books. Uh, you are asking about books, yes? Yes, books For, or any kind of resources which could help. So one of the books that inspired me the most is Seven Habit, Habit of Effective People from St uh, Steve Covey. Uh, this is I learned, uh, Seven Habits of Effective People. Uh, the, and this is about really the mindset, about the communication. Uh, the other one uh, is for effectiveness, I really encourage uh, getting things done in, and implemented in some, uh, some way. I think more, more precisely, because I remember only Polish uh, titles, I would be able to, you can visit me uh, at our booth uh, uh, and I will be able to probably share, uh, share more books with you. But this is the, the, the seven habits of effective people really made me uh, a, a manager and I read it when I was still a student. Okay, thank you very much. It's a pity.